So the question of cables continuously comes up in uh, home theater. And I'll, I'll have to say that I have been guilty myself of thinking that the amount of money that you spend on the high end somehow is going to equate to um, your level of satisfaction when it comes to cable. But what I found is there are a lot of companies out there that make some really great cables and you don't have to spend a fortune in order to enjoy good sound. So there's a, there's a few things that I'll share about that. And I wanna show a couple of cables that I purchased recently and also talk about why I purchased them. So I'm trying to clean up a few things in my system since I've had a little bit of spare time on some weekends um, as COVID-19 and things like that have been going on in the world. And uh, most recently, one of the things that I'm that I'm working on, and I know that this is a big no-no in home theater, but um, I'm going to install a a wall plate for my overheads and my surrounds. And so, as you can see, I'll be terminating on one end, and then I'll be using uh, the banana plugins here and going directly into my amplifiers. And Everything that I've read tells me that you should always go directly from your speakers into your amplifier, and I get it. I also get that nobody can see my um, where I come out of my wall, but it bothers me knowing that it's there. I want it to look clean, I want it to look nice. I've got 14 gauge wire that I had ran originally, and, and I know it's a short run with it being the overhead and surround since it's not my left, right, center. I feel I feel good about going ahead and uh, and making this change. So so I'm going to go ahead and do it. But that's got me thinking about um, speaker wire in general. Recently, a friend of mine had a company come out and let him test out some cables. So we did some blind tests, some sound tests. And we were just using music at the time. But uh, what we were looking at is would we know the difference between the very expensive, and, and I, I want to say that some of the cables that we were listening to were um, the total setup was about um, $20,000 in cables. And that included like the power uh, conditioner, the um, power cords, and everything as well. So I don't know the actual price of the uh, speaker wires themselves that were going to his um, speakers, but the total setup, well more than anything that I've ever seen uh, uh, somebody consider spending and I, I was curious to see what was going to happen. So we did the blind test. I would exit the room. They would change everything up. And so I would not know. And then I would come into the room with my eyes closed every time, only listening. And I would, uh, after that, I would exit the room. I would make my notes and I would go back and forth. And we, we did the back and forth thing. And I think that there was only one time that I missed it. Uh, but I could tell the difference. Now, at the end of all that, and I can't remember if I've talked about this on the channel before, but at the end of all of that, essentially what happened was we could tell a difference. So there was definitely a difference in the cables. There was definitely a difference in the sound. But at the end of the game, we sat down and we all agreed that the difference did not justify the cost. So that was, that was eye-opener to me. So... I uh, personally, I have a couple Kimber cab cables in my um, system going from my um, processor down to my uh, amplifiers. Uh, and that's not for all the channels, just just um, just my overheads is where I have that. But um, I've listened to a lot of cables and what I walk away with is a good quality cable is really what you want to look for and you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a good quality cable. Look at the materials, look what it's made of, and don't be deceived by the outer packaging. So to talk about that, I placed an order, and it was by accident when I was looking at two different cables, but I'm gonna keep what I got. And so the order was, um, one was through Monoprice and one was through Crutchfield. And so when the um, connectors came in, and I'm gonna use this to go from the wall plate to my um, amplifiers, you can see, and I'll pull it back down real quick. They look the same, right? Or minor differences, but if you if you look, these 
look exactly the same. The jackets look the same and everything. So I went ahead and I took um, just just um, just the sleeve off of where you can read the Crutchfield name on, on the Crutchfield one, and here's the model price. So there are subtle differences, but these are essentially, they look the same. Now I can't, I'm not gonna pull all the sleeving off to look on the inside, but I don't know if, if it's possible. Maybe they have a contract with uh, Monoprice to produce these cables from them, but they look exactly the same. One's a three foot, one's a six foot because of the way I'm gonna set up everything once I um, finish terminating and, uh, and resetting where I place the two different amplifiers that are running all the channels but they look exactly the same. And I'm sure they're both great cables. Uh, I've, I've bought from Monoprice and Crutchfield before, so I'm not worried about that. But, but that's the point. Cosmetics can be a challenge because they can fool you into believing that you have a good quality cable. And that's not always the case. So my favorite um, cable for speakers personally is the SVS speaker cables because not only are they good quality cable, but... Um, they sound great and they look great. And what I mean by sound great is I have done some tests and, and I'll say the brand that I've tested them against. And it's not that I think that it's the greatest brand in the world. It's just a, such a common brand in home theater because so many people buy it. And that's the AudioQuest cables. And the equivalent AudioQuest cables would run you um, for a, a pair of cables, like just for your left and right channels, probably $150 and you can get the SVS cables for about $60 for the same pair. And so when you when you consider that, and that's what I base that value off of. It's not that I'm saying that AudioQuest is the greatest cable out there, but, but it's just the value. So what am I getting for the value? And I think that most of the consumers out there are gonna be happy with those SVS cables. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And if you're in the market for some, some cables, I'll put these in the link too. But I would definitely recommend checking out the uh, SVS cables if if you do, like I do, um, go ahead and run directly to your speakers from your um, amplifier for your front channels. Now, I can't do that for the, uh, as far as using something like a, an SVS cable because I don't want to run, you know, directly into my wall speakers or something like, like that. But uh, that's an option to look at. The other thing I wanted to bring out is I, I uh, tend to um, upgrade my HDMI cables every now and then. And uh, this is a company I don't know anything about, but I'm curious to run some tests. And I may do a video in the future talking about it. But I purchased um, this, which is supposed to be uh, able to project, you know, in 8K. And I don't have 8K, but the cable is supposed to be able to do the 48 gigabits per second. And the one thing I would say, too, and again, I, cosmetically... I don't want to be deceived, but this looks to be a very well-made and high-quality cable. So I'm I'm curious to see, um, you know, what the picture is going to look like. And what I what I mean by that is, just is it going to be able to push my 4K Ultra HD high dynamic range signal, you know, the way that it should. But uh, I found that this this seems to be a nice HDMI cable. And it was priced around $20. And, I, and if this works out, it goes back to the point that I was uh, going with earlier. And that is simply, you can find good quality cables out there without having to spend a fortune. And, and especially home theater. So spend, spend the money when you're building out your home theater on the things that are important to you. But you don't always have to spend it on the audio cables yourself. And I know that that's like blasphemous to so many people that think that you do have to invest all your money there, but just take a look at what's on the market. And there are great cables. And if you want to spend a lot of money on cables, do it. Do what makes you happy. Uh, th this is a hobby after all. But if you're just trying to um, build something and you want to invest maybe some of that extra money in a better processor, or if you want to maybe make that, uh, that move to upgrade your amplifier, why don't you invest some of that money there and take a look at some of these other uh, cables that are on the market and I hope this helps you and take a look at it and links will be below. All right.